Hi everyone and thank you for watching this video. My name is Arturo Lotito and I'm a Senior IoT Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. This is episode 1 of a video series presenting a proof of concept to connect and monitor a home photovoltaic system to the AWS cloud using AWS IoT Greengrass, AWS IoT Core, Amazon Timestream and Amazon Manage Grafana. In this first episode, I will provide an end-to-end overview of the proof of concept that I built, starting from how a typical home photovoltaic system looks like, and then walking you through the proof of concept architecture and a demo. In the next episode, we will deep dive into the AWS IoT Greengrass Edge solution and into the manufacturing provisioning and field deployment of such AWS IoT Greengrass device. So let's get started. A typical system consists of an array of panels, a solar inverter, meters to measure the power and energy from the panels to the house, from to the grid. And there might be also a battery with the battery management system to store the energy. And all these devices are usually uh, connected to the inverter, which is also acting as a gateway and exposing an endpoint that we can connect to. The challenge here is that each vendor will expose such endpoint over a different physical wired or wireless port, such as Ethernet, USB, uh, RS-485, using different protocols such as Modbus, MQTT, REST APIs and other. And in order to connect that endpoint, we need a device able to support such variety of connections and protocols and a CPU based device with a full fledged operating system such as Linux would offer the support that we need. And we need also software components to perform the uh, protocol translation and to filter, um, enrich and model the data and to eventually publish the data to the cloud. We need also a way to deploy and configure, run and manage such software components with ideally a zero touch provisioning of the device and a simple configuration so that no IoT expertise is needed to deploy the required software components and to keep them updated. Last but not least, we want also the device to uh, be able to operate offline because of transitory loss of upstream connectivity and we want the device to be resilient to system reboots caused by power outage, system crashes or maintenance. Once the system is connected to the cloud, uh, we would ingest, store and analyze the data to create the insights that we need. And as an owner of the system, I would be interested in tracking the daily production and consumption to track the return on investment, to monitor the health and efficiency of the system, to understand whether maintenance is needed, and to integrate the solar system with my home automation system, for instance. And if we think bigger, uh, a connected solar system could be beneficial for other stakeholders as well, such as an installer, for a better reactive and proactive maintenance, and to utilities for a better energy utilization forecasting and energy generation planning. So how do we implement all this on the AWS cloud? Let's start from the edge device. I'm using a Linux based device connected to my home uh, solar inverter over Modbus TCP over Ethernet. I'm using AWS IoT Greengrass to develop, run and manage at scale the software components that I need to collect and process the data from the inverter, AWS IoT Core to ingest the data, and IoT Rule to route the data to Amazon TimeStream database, Amazon Manage Grafana to create and visualize the insights, and IAM Identity Center for the user authentication and Amazon S3 bucket to host the artifacts, which are deployed to the Greengrass device. As anticipated in this first episode, I'll do a demo of the POC that I built, starting from the um, Grafana dashboard and moving backwards. While in the next episode, I will make a deep dive into the edge solution architecture. Uh, to discuss how I made the um, device able to operate offline and resilient to system reboots. 
I will show you the Python custom components that I developed and the configuration management and layer deployment strategies that I adopted. Finally, in the third episode, I'll discuss the provisioning and the field deployment of the uh, AWS IoT um, uh, Greengrass device. And as I want the, uh, this process to be uh, as simple as possible, I developed a, a custom web app to assist the installer in the field deployment. And this is something that I will show you in the um, last episode. Let's start from the Amazon Manage Grafana console here. Here's the workspace I created and do note that the authentication is using the IAM Identity Center. Let's click on the URL and sign in with the IAM Identity Center. And the credentials are already cached in the browser, otherwise I would have to enter them, of course. And this is the simple uh, dashboard that I created, which is showing the data collected from the connected inverter, which is the power produced by the solar panels array, the power taken from or injected into the grid, consumed by the house, and taken from or injected into the battery. And we have both the current values and the historical values, and right now, the data points are collected every 30 seconds, as you can see here, but that's a parameter that we can change in the device, as we will see later on. The time window is the last 30 minutes, but we can change it and let's look at how yesterday looked like. If we look at the yellow uh, line here, uh, which is the power produced by the panels, we can see the typical bell shape going from the sunrise to the sunset. And yesterday the sky was not very clear, a bit covered in the, in the afternoon, as you can see here. Um, the query looks like this. And for instance, in this case, we are selecting this measure uh, for the device, which ID is taken from this variable that can be selected um, through this drop-down menu over the time range, which is defined here. And the table is this one, and the database is this one. And that database is from this data source, which is the Amazon time stream, as we know already from the architecture diagram. So let's dive a bit into the Amazon time stream database. We go to the Amazon Time Stream console. This is the database. And this is the table. Um, let's look at the uh, last 10 items using this query. And as you can see on each row, we have only one measure, which is this one. Uh, and this is the value. And uh, in addition to the um, measure, we have three dimensions that I added to filter the data by device, like I did in the Grafana uh, dashboard that I showed you, by user and by installer. But who is populating this table? Let's move backwards one step more from this Amazon time stream database to the AWS IoT Core. Let's go to the AWS IoT Core console. I'm using a rule, this one, to extract the measure from the messages published on this topic. And uh, do note that the fourth um, field of this topic can be any because the uh, devices will use their own device ID when publishing messages to this topic. Um, uh, the resulting message is then routed by the rule action to this time stream table. And as you can see, the rule action is also adding the three dimensions that we saw before, where the device ID is extracted from the uh, fourth field of the topic, 
while the user ID and the installer ID are extracted from the message itself. Let me call out that this time stream IoT rule action currently supports only the so-called single measure write, which means that each measure extracted from this message is written to an individual record in the time stream table. That's the reason why if we look again at the uh, time stream table, you have only one measure on each row, uh, even if all these measures belong to the same message, as you can tell looking at the uh, timestamp here, which is the same for all of this. A more efficient approach would be having all these measures uh, on the same multi-measure record, but that's not currently supported by the rule engine action. Last but not least, uh, if we go back to the IoT core, um, the basic in just topic. Uh, what's this? Well, it's an optimized path capable of ingestion only, which means that there's no PubSub brokering capabilities here, but uh, uh, it does ingestion at no cost. It means that you still pay for the connections and rules, but you don't pay for the ingestion itself, which is a great cost optimization option that I'm using in my POC. And as we will see later on to leverage this basic ingest feature, you, you have just to send the messages to a topic which is the concatenation of this prefix and this topic. In the next episode, we will move another step backwards to the AWS IoT Greengrass devices publishing the messages to this topic. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next episode.